Hi, welcome to Mathematical Logic, Math 470 at uh, UMass Boston. Uh, this lecture, we're going to talk about truth and reasoning. Okay, so logic concerns with uh, knowledge, representation, and reasoning. How do I take knowledge and represent it? And how do I use that representation and reason with it? And so knowledge is represented by sentences or proposition in a particular knowledge representation language. So we'll get to that, um, an example of that later. But for now, uh, let's talk about what a sentence or a proposition is. A sentence or a proposition takes on one of two possible values, true or false. So for example, 1 plus 5 is 6. That's a true proposition. Uh, Boston is the capital of Rhode Island. That's a false uh, sentence or proposition. Uh, so these are examples. Uh, here are some non-examples. Wake up and are you tired? These are not uh, propositions because they don't have uh, a, a true or false value. Uh, wake up is a command. Are you tired? Is a question. So, so those would be uh, non-examples. Let's talk about syntax versus semantics. Uh, senses are expressed according to the syntax of the uh, representation language, which specifies all the senses that are well formed. So again, we haven't gone to a representation language yet, a language that we use to represent um, truth and and how to manipulate those uh, those values. But right now, um, let's talk about what the syntax of uh, such a language uh, would mean. And so, for example, in ordinary uh, arithmetic, just basic math, uh, we know about basic syntax. For example, x plus y is 3. That's a well-formed sentence. That's a well-defined, well-formed sentence. And it uh, follows and satisfy the syntax of uh, of basic math but something like x3y equal plus is not um, a well-formed uh, sentence that follows the syntax of uh, basic math so so that's basically uh, so syntax is basically the the, the form uh, of uh, of the language and then semantics refers to the meaning of the the sentences the semantics defines the truth of each sentence uh, with respect to each possible word or model. So a model is just, uh, let me actually let's do an example here. So for example, um, semantics of, uh, again, basic math says that when you have a sentence like x plus y is 3, uh, then that sentence is true in a word or in a model where x is 2 and y is 2. Uh, sorry, uh, x plus y is 4, rather. Sorry about that. Um, Uh, and so if you have an equation like x plus y is 4, uh, then in a world or in a model where x is 2 and y is 2, then this statement is true. But in a different uh, world or a different model where uh, x is 1 and y is 1, then this equation is not true. Uh, and so so these sentences have meanings when we, as when we assign uh, value to uh, the sentence. So... Uh, so again, syntax is basically the valid ex expression in the language. Semantics is basically the the meaning of those senses. So, for example, uh, here's a here's an expression that is have different syntax but same semantics. Two plus three is uh, equal to three plus two. So two plus three is a different syntax than three plus two, but they both have the same semantics. They both equal to five, right? So even though the syntax is different, the meaning is the same. But here's an example of where the syntax is the same, but the semantics is dif different. Uh, so if you've done some programming, and if you haven't, uh, in Python 2.7, this is the old Python, uh, the, this is the programming language. 3 divided by 2 uh, uses something called floor division. Where 3, 3 divided by 2 is, uh, is throw, away, throw away the decimal, so that 3 divided by 2 is actually is a 1. Uh, and then in the new Python, Python 3, uh, 3 divided by 2 is uh, it's true division, so 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So even though the syntax here is the same, uh, the semantics is different, uh, depends on which Python version you're using. Okay, so we've been talking about uh, a language representation, um, and so let's give you an example of this. So propositional logic is a very simple but very powerful example of uh, a language representation. Uh, so let's talk about the syntax of this uh, logic. It defines all the senses that are allowable or the senses that are valid according to the syntax. Uh, atomic senses 
basically are very simple. They consist of only a single proposition uh, symbol. Uh, each um, symbol stands for a proposition that can be either true or false. So for example, let P be a, a proposition symbol, it represents it is raining. That could either be true or false. Uh, Q is another single proposition symbol, it represents the ground is wet. And so these are called atomic sentences. Just a very basic sentence that uh, that we're going to use to build up more complex uh, sentences. So these are called atomic sentences. And of course when we have a symbol, a symbol could be, uh, we usually use a uppercase letter, and we also can contain like letters or subscripts. Uh, P, Q, R, North, Z1, W12, we can use any of those um, as uh, our symbols. Okay, let's, uh, when we have a bunch of senses, we want to combine them to form more complex senses. So, um, and then we'll list, the way we're going to explain this is that we're going to go through a bunch of operations and explain it using uh, something called a truth table, which is a list of all possible truth values of these senses. Uh, one of the most basic operations is the negation operation. Um, it's a unary operation that means that it acts on one operand. Uh, this symbol is is the this symbol right here. And so, what is the uh, what is the negation? Well, uh, if you have a one operand a, a could either be true or false. So in two cases, the negation of a will just flip it. True becomes false. False becomes true. So that's it. Uh, so we say that uh, a literal is uh, is another word for an atomic sentence. Uh, and so we distinguish between a positive little, right? A is a positive little, just an atomic sentence, either true or false. Um, and and it's just a proposition symbol in particular. And a negated atomic sentence, um, or uh, we call that negative uh, literal, is uh, is the negation of A. So these are called uh, literals. Another operation that's uh, important is called conjunction or the N uh, operator. So this is a binary operation. It takes uh, two operands. Uh, so the way it works here is that uh, we have two operands A and B. These are the, the four cases that uh, they take values on A and B uh, have either true or false values. Um, so A and B is true uh, exactly when A both A and B is true. Otherwise, um, A and B has a value of false. Uh, so this is called uh, the conjunction of senses uh, A and B, and is denoted by uh, by this symbol. It's kind of like an inverted V. Uh, inverted U. And I guess inverted V. <laughs> uh, a and B are called the conjuncts of uh, of this uh, uh, of this uh, conjunction. So, um, and then there's another one is the uh, disjunction or the or. This, the disjunction of senses A and B is denoted by by A and then uh, V B. So this is a uh, the symbol for uh, disjunction, and and so uh, here's the true table A or B. A or B is true uh, if at least one of A or B is true. So if both of them are true, or at least uh, this one is uh, A is true, this one B is true. Then in any of these cases, A or B is true. But if both of them are false, then uh, A or B is false. So the A and B are. These uh, these propositions are called the disjuncts of A or B, and so this is actually uh, the inclusive or, um, and uh, and so there's uh, in in math and also computer science there's also the exclusive or, and the inclusive or is actually not some sometimes in English uh, we we actually use the exclusive or, uh, so the inclusive or just means that we include both. Um, with, with the case where both A and B is true, we we let that be uh, be true. So maybe uh, I'll give you an example. If I go to say uh, a restaurant and say Olive Garden, and they ask me if I want soup or salad, again soup or salad, uh, they probably you probably can't say both because <laughs> when they say that, they actually mean the exclusive or. Do I want soup or salad, but not both? So that would be kind of the, the traditional use of. Uh, of or is it the exclusive or, uh, but uh, but here in this case we want to use or in as the inclusive or that we uh, if a both a and b is true, we allow that to be true. Implication or conditional. Uh, so this is the uh, the the familiar if a then b. Uh, so it's denoted by this arrow. So this is the conditional or the implication operation. Um, so a is the antecedent and b is the consequent. Uh, another way, and if you've done math, you've seen this before, where uh, 
A is the sufficient condition for B, and then we say that B is the necessary condition for A. Uh, as a, something that we see later is that turns out that uh, this conditional is related to the two other uh, operations that we've seen, which is that A is con uh, a condition B uh, is equivalent to not A or B. In other words, have the same truth table. In one of the homework uh, for this week, you get to kind of uh, uh, kind of show that. But uh, yeah, so okay, so this uh, this is kind of confusing. So I want to kind of use a more example of uh, this implication operation. Uh, so let's look at this. If one plus one is two, then uh, let's just say Paris is the capital of France. Uh, so okay, so why does this has has the value of uh, well, this is a kind of simple example, but let's do that again. So uh, so no, this tends, this uh, part of the uh, uh, the conditional is true. One plus one is two, and then uh, Paris is the capital of France. So if this is true, and this is true, then the whole thing is true. Now, this is where uh, it gets a little bit confusing. Uh, if this is uh, false, one plus one not equal to two, that's false, and this is true. Um, but we're going to let the whole thing be true. So even though the conditional this this uh, antecedent uh, is false. Uh, and um, uh, but we let this whole thing be true. So why is that? And the idea here is that uh, let's go back to this. So if A then B. If A is true, then B uh, B is also true. But if A is false, then then really uh, we're gonna say that this sentence is, is vacuously true because if A is false, then this doesn't apply. And so we're gonna say that this this the statement would be true. Um, so again, if A is false, then regardless of what B is. We're gonna consider this conditional to be true. So this is kind of confusing, but that's how we're gonna uh, we're gonna disagree on that. And then uh, certainly, if uh, if A is true but B is false, then definitely that that's gonna be false. Um, and so let's do some more example here. So if this is false, then it doesn't matter what this is. Is true or false? So if the first uh, if A is uh, false, then it doesn't matter what B is. Uh, the statement would still be true. But this is a case where the statement would be false. If A is true but B is false, then definitely this conditional is false. Biconditional. Let's denote A. Uh, let's denote this by using a double arrow. So this is the biconditional operation. And basically, uh, uh, this A biconditional B is true uh, when and only when A and B have the same truth uh, truth value. So in other words, if um, I notice here, this is true because they have the same value. Uh, and then it's true again because they have the same false value. But if they have different value, then uh, the by conditional is uh, is false. So by conditional is to know that they ha they have to be the same uh, to be true. Okay, so these are connectives. We have seen so far five connectives: uh, the negation, the or, the and, the implication, and the by conditional. So these are called propositional connectives, and they're used to connect sentences and form more com complex uh, sentences. Uh, so one thing to kind of be clear is that we're going to define a, a precedence or an order of operation uh, because we have these uh, all these different operations. We're going to put the, the not operator have the highest precedence. In other words, without parentheses, uh, the not is going to be uh, it's going to it's going to be um, done first. So for example, not A and B, uh, the not A is going to bind to A. The not is going to bind to A uh, uh, first rather than binding. To the in, to the and operation, so we're gonna do not before the and. So so this means um, not a in parentheses and b. Um, so that has the a high precedence. Um, and um, and then I guess uh, the other and then uh, I guess I didn't make clear here, but uh, the uh, we're gonna put the uh, the next operation is uh, we're gonna do and before or, and then. Uh, uh, so that's going to be something that uh, even if you've done Java or Python, uh, yeah. So in programming, the uh, the AND operation is done before the OR operation, for example. Okay, uh, let's see. And then parentheses, we can use that to kind of make things uh, clearer. Uh, you can use a regular um, regular parentheses or square brackets. They're the same. Let's just make it easier to read. Okay, so here's an example. We have, we notice we have a bunch of connectives here: the the or, the not, and the conditional. 
Um, and uh, and this is the corresponding true table. So one way of doing this is to do one thing at a time. Uh, to do the uh, the a part first, the antecedent first, uh, the premise of this, the conditional. Sometimes this is called. Do this part first, make a column out of it, and then um, combine that with uh, with c, and then relate this column to this with the conditional. Uh, so I'll let you guys check uh, this true table, uh, and. Um, but the key here is that once you have this, then uh, it's easy to do the next part, which is that, for example, let's do uh, one of these. Uh, why is this uh, true? Well, if this is false, then it doesn't matter what C is. This will definitely be true. Uh, and then, uh, another, as another example, if this is true and C is false, then that conditional will, will give you a false value. But go ahead and check the rest of that. And notice that we have three symbols, A, B, C, so that means we expect eight rows in the true table right two to the third power because uh, every uh, every uh, proposition symbol has two values so two times two times two is eight possible uh, uh, combinations okay so we say that a sentence is valid if it is true in in all models in all assignments uh, this is so for example a and b implies a if you do this out you get true everywhere so so that is true. Uh, so a model again, a model is just an, an assignment of true, uh, an assignment of true or false to each of the propositional symbol. And so in each of these model, right, the, the answer is always true. So we say that this sentence is, is valid. Uh, it's always true, regardless of what assignment you make. Um, another example, another example is p, p or not p. Right? This is always true. Whatever p is, either p is true or not p is true. Um, and so these are also known as the tautologies, and so valid sentences, the tautologies, they're, they're the same. So to determine if a sentence is a tautology or valid, we can use the truth table. If you use truth table and you get all true, then you, then you know that the, whole, the truth table is, uh, you know that the sentence is a tautology. Um, and or another way of doing this is to use deduction. So we're going to show that next. How do I use deduction to kind of reason? How do I know, use the definition of these operation and deduce that something is always true? Uh, so, for example, I want to prove that this sentence is valid. Uh, in other words, regardless of what A, B, C uh, values are, this whole thing will always be true. Uh, I'm missing. Uh, actually, no, I'm fine. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so the way we do is that we're gonna we want to we want to prove that this thing is always true. So we're gonna use something called proof by contradiction, and assume that there is some assignment of A, B, and C that makes this false, and see if we can get some kind of contradiction, uh, and so. So let's assume that for a second that this statement is false. It's sometimes false, or in other words, false for some value of a, b, or c. Well, uh, if this is false, that means that here's a conditional. We look at the the outermost uh, uh, conditional here, the outermost operation, which is this one, and say that if this is false, that means that this has to be true, and this has to be false. And so that that's what this is. That that, that means that the first uh, the uh, the the first part of the conditional has to be true, the second is false. And then going off to uh, looking at this, so the, the, if this is false, and the next is that uh, if this is false, let's see what can we get from this. If this is false, that means that this must be true and this must be false. So not A has to be true and B has to be false. So now, based on our deduction, we know that B has to be false. But if not A is true, that means A has to be false. And then uh, since B is false, not b is true we can also deduce that if, if not b is true then true or anything is always true because uh, this is an or so if one of them is true then the whole thing is true uh, but if this is uh, if a is false we saw that earlier and this is true we just proved that uh, then that means that uh, if this is true and this is uh, if this is false and this is true then these are not equivalent so this uh, by conditional must be false but that's a contradiction because we uh, we assume earlier that uh, we prove earlier that this is supposed to be true. So that's a contradiction. That means that assuming that the assumption that we make that this is this could be false or sometimes false is wrong. Therefore, it must always be true. So make sure you understand that that logic. It's, um, this is a uh, proof by contradiction. There. We'll get back to that a little later. Um, Okay, so let's talk about how about, how about this one. Let's try to prove that this is always true. Well, again, same idea. We're going to assume the whole thing is um, 
is uh, is false for some value and see if we get a contradiction. So uh, if, so that means we're gonna here's the outermost uh, operation the OR. So if this is uh, false, that means that this is false and this is false. That's how you get uh, to be false if you have an OR. So that means the first part and and the second part are both false. Um, and on the right side, a uh, imply or a by uh, condition of b. If this is false, a must be true and b is false. Uh, and then if a is uh, if a is true, and um, let's see if a, yeah if a is true here. Oh well, well, we know that this thing is false from from before. If this whole thing is false and a is true, that means b or c must be false. So that's what that that says. Right, again, if this, we know this whole thing is is false, but we know A is true, therefore this must be false. But we also already know that B is false, so that means that C must also be false for this to be false. So notice right, every, everything here we deduce by using the definition of these uh, connectives. And so, but notice that we don't have any contradiction. We found that A is true, B is false, and C is false. So we actually found a model, again, it's just an assignment. A is true, B is false, C is false, and if you make that assignment, then this thing is false. And so it is possible that this is false. So that means that this is not valid, because valid means it has to be always be true. The fact that we found one assignment or one model that makes this uh, false means that it's not a tautology. This sentence is not valid. Okay, satisfiability. Uh, so in propositional logic, again, this is the our knowledge representation language. is the way we represent... Um, uh, knowledge so far using symbols and these connectives to create uh, uh, to create these uh, these senses so uh, again uh, we kind of uh, alluded to this earlier but a model or a possible word simply fixes the truth value uh, true or false to every pos proposition symbol just uh, you just fix uh, assign a certain true or false to all the variables that's a model or a possible word a possible state of, uh, of a sentence so you have, if P is a sentence, we say that P is satisfiable if there exists some model M that makes P true. If there's a way to make to uh, assign all the variables in the um, all the symbols in the proposition P to make P true, then we say that P is satisfiable. We say that this model, this assignment M, satisfy P, or we say that M is a model of P. Now you have a uh, that's one sentence. What if you have a bunch of sentences, a set of sentences, S one to S n? We say the S is satisfiable if there exists some model that makes all of them true at the same time. So, for example, here's P. Uh, one possible model: if A is true, B is false, and C is true, that'll make P be true. You can check that out. Uh, so this model makes uh, the sentence P is true, so we know that P is satisfiable, and in fact, this model satisfies P. I notice uh, we have three symbols, so we have uh, two to the third, uh, which is eight possible models. So we saw earlier that we have true table, you have eight rows because there's uh, eight possible models. In general, if you have n symbols, then you have two to the n possible models. Notice this is an exponential function. So that's why true table, uh, when you try to create true table, it could take uh, a long time. It takes, it's very expensive to do true table because uh, this is exponential. So if n is, uh, is, is uh, like 100, Right, this is huge. So true table uh, is simple, but it can be very uh, computationally expensive. We're going to denote MP to denote the set of all models of P, all the assignment that make P true is M of P. So for example, here's the true table for uh, for P. And notice what is M of P? Uh, M of P is basically all the assignments or all the models. This is one model. This is another model. There's five models in red that makes P be true. Uh, and so that's what well, that's what M P is. M P is these five assignment, uh, these five models uh, that make uh, P true. Each model satisfies P. So that's what M P is. It's just the set of all these uh, these models, five of these models. Okay, entailment. Let's talk about what that means. So we now we talk about the, the idea of truth. We just uh, discussed the, the idea of truth. Now let's just talk about how to reason with uh, those truths. So this involves. Um, um, something called logical entailment so the idea here is that we have senses um, and we want to kind of figure out whether there's a relationship whether the one sentence follows logically from another so so logical entailment 
uh, means that, that can we show that one sentence follows logically from another sentence? So, for example, uh, more formally, if, let, if P and Q are sentences, then we say that the sentence P entails the sentence Q. Or another way of saying that is that we say that P logically implies Q. Uh, if every model which satisfies P also satisfies Q, and the notation we use for for this is this uh, this notation. This is a vertical bar and an inequality. This is used to show uh, entailment or uh, logically imply or logically, logical implication, however you want to say it. There's a lot of ways for us to say this. But this is uh, logically entail. In general, you have a, a set of senses S, S1 to Sn. Then we say that S logically imply or logically entails Q. We denote, use the same symbol. Again, before P was one sentence, but now you can have a bunch of senses. Uh, so now it's the same definition. It means that Every model that satisfies all of S uh, must also satisfy Q. So that, so again, uh, a, a set of sentences logically imply or logically entail uh, a sentence Q if uh, every model that satisfies all of the sentences also satisfies Q. So this is just a generalization of, of this definition. So using the notation earlier with the models, we can write that uh, P entails Q if and only if. Uh, all the models of P is a subset of the models of Q. In other words, any model that is, uh, makes P true also makes uh, Q true. And so, uh, so, th so th these two statements are equivalent. If P entails Q, then uh, the models of P must be in a subset of the models of Q. Uh, another way to think about this is that P is a stronger assertion than 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 Q. So that's a typo here. Uh, what is that? Let me let me explain that. So the the left side of this uh, this is a stronger assertion than than Q because notice that this subset is uh, a, this is a subset of of, uh, of MQ. Um, if you have um, and the reason why this is a stronger assertion is because uh, it rules out more models of possible world, right? Is that if you have a uh, if something is stronger assertion, if you have more condition or more more constraint, then it rules out more possibilities. Um, so, for example, if you are trying to come up with a characteristic of someone you want to date, and uh, and you have a lot of conditions, a lot of uh, you have a kind of a strong, you know, a strong constraint, then that means that you're going to have less people who who might satisfy those conditions. So, um, so yeah, in this case, P is a stronger assertion. That's why this is a subset because uh, you when you have a lot a stronger assertion. You you have less models that satisfies it. Uh, so that's an example of entailment. Um, if uh, if you have the x is zero, then that logically imply or logically entail uh, x times y is zero. If x is zero, the product of x times y, regardless of the value of y, is also zero. Okay, so about logical equivalence, uh, you have p and q as senses. P is logically equivalent to q if and only if uh, p entail q and q entail p. Um, and another way of saying that is that P is largely equivalent to Q if and only if they have the same truth table. Um, so there is some important connection between these definitions and logical connectives. Uh, and so I'll, I'll say right here, and some of these will be done in the homework, but I'll just say that, and also the, the, this is really simple. Uh, these, uh, if you look at the definition, this follows from the definition, but uh, P largely entails or largely imply Q if and only if uh, P imply P uh, conditional Q is valid. So if this is always true, if P implies Q is always true, that means that P entails Q. Um, and conversely, if P entails Q, then that means that this uh, connective is is always valid, is always true. So that there's a connection between the connectives, conditional, and logically entails. In the same way, logical equivalent is related to the biconditional uh, connective. So these these are these are similar in that way. They're they're equivalent in that way. Okay. So here's another example. Here's P. Here's Q. And the question here: Does P entail Q? In other words, if P is true, is Q is true? Well, look at the truth table and see that. Look, look at all the models. There's four models, four assignments here, and notice that the assignments, the model, this model that makes P true, also make Q true. Then it makes p false. Then we don't care. So we don't look at these three lines. 
Uh, we only care, and tell me means that if P is true, Q must be true, and there's only one row that satisfies that condition, that uh, the assumption that P is true and, and Q uh, is also true in that case. So, so P does entail Q. So this statement does entail this statement. So this statement uh, largely implied this statement. So that's another way to think about that. How about this one? Let's say P is this one right here and Q is C. Uh, does P largely imply uh, Q? Well, we we'll look at this and say, well, actually this line right here, P is true, but Q is false. So that means that the answer is no. Uh, this models make P true, but make Q false. So P doesn't entail Q, or P doesn't imply Q. How about Q? Does Q entail P? Does the Q largely imply P? Uh, yes, because every time Q is true, P is true. Here's another model. This, mo this model right here, Q is true, P is also true. So every time Q is true, in other words, the, the, set, the set of um, MQ, has four, these four things, is a subset of MP, these five, five models. So notice that subset definition. So this is the answer here is yes. Every model which makes Q true, the green, also makes P true, the red. Also, uh, notice this, the set of, uh, uh, of models of Q is a subset of the set of models of P. Okay, so knowledge base agent. Uh, in the previous example, we use uh, entailment to um, actually we we use entailment to to derive conclusions. So this is kind of a, a nice that we can use truth table and entailment to to make logical inference, to take truth and also to derive new truth. Uh, so that's this is nice that we can actually reason with um, uh, with the uh, entailment and and truth table. So um, when you talk about knowledge-based agent, an agent who has knowledge and who can apply that knowledge by deriving conclusion and making logical inference. Uh, for example, a human uh, would be a knowledge-based agent uh, or an artificial intelligent agent, for example, in games. Uh, you play games and some of those AI players right, can, can make decisions and can be very smart. Or even something like Siri or Alexa, uh, smart assistant like that, they, they have a certain knowledge base and they, they can actually deduce and make um, conclusions and uh, and inference uh, and and all these things have, have um, they have some kind of uh, prior knowledge that they have that they can work with and so we, we say that a knowledge base or KB for short a knowledge base is basically a set of senses and these senses are taken to be true and represent some facts about the world so these is basically a bunch of senses that we're going to assume to be true so we call that the knowledge base so humans we have knowledge base with, that we work with everything we know everything we learn and then even uh, something like Alexa Siri, they, it has a certain knowledge base that it works with. So an, an agent uh, learns by uh, well, a couple ways. Is that uh, we can use logical inference to derive new senses uh, from senses in the KB. So I have a bunch of no uh, facts from the KB, the knowledge base. I can use deduction to produce new senses, uh, conclusions, or inferences, uh, and then. That's how, one way I can learn. I can, I can take those new facts, those new derived senses, and add it to my knowledge base. So this process, you can repeat this until you keep adding facts, conclusion, uh, to your knowledge base, and then that's one way to learn. Um, and another way to, to learn is to be, you, you just told the new facts. Maybe you program something, you add facts to, to Alexa or whatever, uh, or, or maybe you have a robot that has sensors or data that is collecting as it sends uh, data around it, it's learning new facts about the world it's living in, so we can add these to the knowledge base. So these are two ways that uh, an agent can learn. Um, and uh, and so the a KB, the knowledge base, is, is essentially a set of senses, S1 to SN. Uh, each of these SI is a propositional um, a sentence, has a value. Of, uh, yeah, so we assume that everything here is true. And suppose that we have uh, some some uh, propositional Q, and we want to know whether our knowledge base uh, entail Q. In other words, does uh, our knowledge base imply Q? Or can we derive this new sentence from our knowledge base? We can use uh, the truth table to carry out this uh, logical reasoning. So this is nice that even though the truth table is pretty simple, it can also help us reason. Um, that's what we want to get out here. So one way to do this is that we enumerate all possible models for all the symbols in KB and Q. We just look at all possible um, uh, assignments or models. And we check that if every model which satisfies all the senses in the KB also satisfies Q, if that's true, 
uh, then that means that Q, the, the, the knowledge base does entail Q. So this method of reasoning is also called model checking. In fact, we can actually write a program, and maybe in a future video we can use Python or something to write a program that, that does model checking, that just use the true table and just enumerate all possible models. Computers are very good at this, just enumerating all possible models and checking the, the definition of entailment. If the knowledge base is true, uh, design plan, uh, then check and see if, if this is true, and then um, and then if uh, this is if this KB entail Q, then we have we basically found a new fact that is true, and we can add it to our knowledge base. So this is one way to re reason, and model checking is just a brute force way of uh, enumerating all possible models and just checking the definition of entailment. Uh, but if the if the definition is satisfied, then that means we we have reason, and we have uh, infer that if uh, KB is true, then Q is true. So this is called model checking. And again, I think that maybe in a future in a videos, maybe next week, I can show you how to do this with uh, like Python or something. Uh, suppose that we have the following um, atomic uh, proposition. Let's do an example here. So let's say R it means it is raining. B is I play basketball. And S is I play soccer. And suppose that we have a knowledge base, just a bunch of facts, uh, and say that our knowledge base contains the following sentences. Uh, so here's a, the first fact from our knowledge base. If it's not raining, then I play basketball. So maybe that's the fact about me. Uh, I play basketball or soccer, but I never play both on, on a given day. And maybe uh, on, a, on a given day, I play soccer. So if this is all, if, if this is, uh, all the sentences in my knowledge base, can I deduce, can I make deduction from this? Can I conclude, uh, can I derive or, um, or infer new senses from my knowledge base. So as an example, does my knowledge base, does it entail or logically imply that it's raining? If these are my facts on a given day, uh, does that mean that it's raining, for example? So let's convert the, the statement from the previous problem into a syntax of uh, propositional logic. So the first one is, if it's not raining, then I play basketball. That says that uh, not R implies B. So if it's not raining, I play basketball. The next one is that I play basketball or soccer, but not both. Well, I can do that in two sentences. I'm going to say uh, I play basketball or soccer, but not both. Right? Not not both. So that's that's the second. Just breaking this down into two sentences, and then I play soccer it means that uh, S is true. So if I have all the, this is my knowledge base. Again, a knowledge base is basically just a set of sentences that are assumed to be true. Does this knowledge base entail? Or largely imply that it's raining, right? And so let's use model checking by enumerating all possible models using the true table and check for entailment. So here's the um, true table again. You can check the work here, but notice that the KB this column represent uh, the uh, basically we we have to check that for every model we have to check to make sure that uh, all of these are true, right? Because uh, if one of them is false. Then, then we get the false value here. So, so notice from here that there's only one model, this model right here in red, that makes the, the KB true, the knowledge base true. Meaning that if uh, R is T uh, is true, B is F, and then S is T, then it makes all of these statements true, right? So you think of KB as an and, right? Take each of these statements and then and them together, um, and so. If I add them together, then the only way to get it to be true in this, in this example is, is there's only one model here. Well, in this model where it makes the KB true, is R true? By the, by the way, R, I just copy and paste. R is the same thing as this one. So there's only one model where it makes the KB true, and that model also makes R true. So this does satisfy the definition of entailment. So we do we enumerate our models and check that there's only, turns out there's only one, one in red that satisfy KB, but uh, it's enough. Because that that one also makes R true, so that means that we do have uh, entailment, and so that does mean that, given my, this knowledge base of, of facts, I can conclude that it is raining. Um, yeah, so that's basically um, the end of this lecture. We talk about truth table. We talk about how to uh, we talk about sentences in pro propositional logic, uh, how to combine them, how to form them, and then we talked about how to uh, use uh, the truth table to to reason, uh, as in this example. Uh, yeah, so that's the first. Uh, so here's my resources. You're welcome to look these up. But um, okay, great. So I think I'll just uh, end this lecture here. Okay, thanks for watching.